Hello, wherever you're watching us from. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Kate Rira. This is the POV Podcast Season 2. Season 2 is all about African stories and African leaders. And when we talk about leaders, it's not always in the political field. It's a leader in every other thing that we either consume, participate in, or just revolving around our life. One of the biggest um, issues that is has been accepted in our society right now is mental health issues. And we cannot, we cannot turn a blind eye to the people who participate in coming out and showing us how to maneuver through mental health issues. My guest today is Akini Michael, aka Akini the Therapist. I met her on uh, TikTok. Nilimpata kifanya TikTok challenges. You know, it was really fun to see that. And then I learned about what she's all about, mental health. And I said, you know what? She's an African leader in that realm. And that's why she had to be on a seat. Welcome to the show. I love that. Yeah. African leader. Yes. I love that. Um, you know, I believe African stories can only be told by Africans. Yes. And that is why I was like, okay, we have an African lady mm. talking about mental health, mm. something that has been shunned away yeah. for a long time. Mm. Tell me how Akinya decided to be a therapist. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think a lot of it has to do with my own background, okay. um, my childhood, my upbringing, how I was raised. But I've always generally been a curious person trying to understand um, how humans operate, how humans work. I'm always curious. So you'll find me watching a lot of reality shows also okay. just to understand, okay, this one is thinking in this way, this one is operating in this way. So basically my story is um, based a lot with how I was raised, how I was parented, and I became very passionate about it later on in my 20s. Mm. So I was doing something entirely different. What were you I doing was a before? business student. Are you a business student? Yeah, I was in Strathmore. You wanted to <laughs> ingia kwenye biashara. But a lot of it was also, you know, you're being steered in that direction by your parents. And yeah. because you're not yet sure of where you want to go, you just do it. Mm. But then I got to a point, I was like, I'm not feeling this. This is not who I am. This is not what I feel mm. I'm called here to do. Mm. So I took some time, like a six-month break, where okay. I just talked to my dad and I was like, give me time to figure out what it is I want to do, and then I'll let you know. And when I start doing Best Believe, I'm going to thrive here. Mm. Because when I was doing the business course, I was... Terribly failing you those units. struggling. Eh? Marite. Eh, eh, eh. So he, I was just like, there's no need to force me to do something that I don't want to do. And then I'm failing at it and mm. your money is, you know, going to waste. Mm. So give me six months to think about what I want to do. And then I'll let you know. So I started doing my research and I realized based off of my personality People tell me, you know, when I talk to you, I feel so good, you oh, know. Wow. Yeah, you're so empathetic. I, when I talk to you, I'm feeling hard. Mm. And I was like, okay, I think I can I can get into psychology. It was picked from your personality. Yes. I think that's really good. There, yeah. there are a few things I've already picked up from the conversation. You come from a home that is very open to listening to mm. you because telling people, give me six months, let me figure out myself before I make the decision. Yeah. is not something very common, especially in African homes. Mm. Personally, myself, I stuck to a course that subwoofed me mm. and my passion was really elsewhere. Right. Now imagine if I dived into elsewhere, mm. where I would be, mm. probably be, you know, 10 times farther mm. than I am. Then, so yeah. I think I, I have to applaud your parents for mm. that, you know, accommodating children to be like, you know what, take your time, make right. your decision. And and we understand because sometimes when they're steering you to business school, mm. that's what they think is best for you. Yes. And yet when you're young, you really can't know what's best mm. for you. From your from your schooling and psychology and learning the human mind, yeah. when do you feel like most humans, male or female, mm -hmm. their minds are able to make solid decisions? When when is the time timeline? Twelve years, two years? When's mm. the timeline for a human to make like a proper decision? Um, I think if you have been able to. You've been raised in a safe environment, as we had spoken about. This is always. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you've been raised in a, a safe environment, which has allowed you to blossom into uh, your true personality, at 18, it's it's very possible to start understanding, okay, I, this feels right for me. Okay. This feels, 
you know, it's good for me. Mm. But for most of us who've come from chaotic environments where, you know, it was my way or the highway. So you, you basically couldn't really um, blossom into your true personality. You are basically masking. Mm. A lot of us get to know what we want after 25. Telling me to tell for a lot of the uh, the average Kenyan, 25 and above, so, that's when your frontal lobe is like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm in this course because my mom told me it's not because I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, I'm with this partner because... Because I like this preference because yes. this is what I've been taught. Yes. To like it's not really yeah. it. In front, frontal lobe, frontal <laughs> lobe. Yes. I've heard it so many times. I remember saying that before 25, you don't have it. And I'm glad that because you're someone who studied psychology mm-hmm. and the human mind, you're elaborating it. Yeah. What, what would be the best advice for someone below 25 who are looking to make serious decisions? Mm-hmm. Because we even tell people now, don't even get married till you're 30. Yeah. You know, why? what What are these time frames we keep giving mm-hmm. people? First of all, what are these time frames you keep giving people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think time frames mm-hmm. are there most of the time to allow someone to make safe decisions that yeah. will not, you know, bite you in the ass later on. Mm. But then again, I think every individual is unique. Even as we talk about the frontal lobe, there are people who mature way faster than someone who's at 30 and they're 20. And, you know, when you hear them speak, it's like, wow, okay, you're very mature for your age. Yeah. So I'd say outliers, Mm. there are outliers who um, before 25 are able to make healthy, mature decisions. But from studies, have studies have been able to show that only after 25 are you able to really sit down and say, okay, I'm understanding my personality. This is this, this is my temperament. I thrive better in this environment. I thrive better with such individuals. And then you're able to, you know, make more informed decisions. And Basically, from my own personal philosophy, I feel like a lot of times, maybe our parents rush us, and it's not necessarily even in a bad light. Yes. Our parents tend to rush us or um, steer us to making safe choices mm. and not take risks. Their safe choices. Yes, their safe choices. Mm. Because of also the kind of environment or society we are in, you mm. know. And that's why you're finding um, there's a collective... Uh, shift in the psyche of a lot of Kenyans now yes. with saying we are tired of how structures are mm. because our parents are forcing us to make these safe choices because of the kind of society we are in. Yeah, or they are accustomed to. Yeah, they are yeah. accustomed to. Like, um, stick to the fine lines. Yes. Stick by the sidewalk. Yes. Don't break the course. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's safe to get an office job. Mm. It's safe to be in corporate. It's safe to be married. Yes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's uh, all these things. Mm. It's because that's how they've been conditioned to to think and yeah. because of where we are at. So a lot, a lot of times um, we need to be able to break those barriers and tell them that is not the only way you can live. Mm. There are other ways in which you can still thrive and enjoy life without really making this safe uh, lack mentality decision. Yeah, because you know, when you're you're told you go to law, become a lawyer, join a law firm, and that's the income, it's it's safe and it's also rooted in luck. Yes. And we can't still blame them because look at where we are at. I know, they stuck to that, 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 and that's what they were shown. Like when you're working, when you're earning a living, Mm -hmm. when you're in your home and you're not out there in the world, you know, being an artist and living your life, you're safer. Because those environments, Mm -hmm. the artists and people who go up against the tide have never really lived life. Yes. They're always below income. Mm -hmm. You know, they're hated by society. They're seen as less. Mm -hmm. They've been seen as crazy to some point yeah. for having such great opinions so i i get why they chose those decisions mm. but i understand why we can't do that yes. anymore yes and you and she actually said that on one of her tiktoks when she's talking about how the way we grew up is really showing how we are showing up as uh, political mm. 
What are we becoming? Our poli- political ideologies. Yeah, become, there are different political ideologies yeah. right now. I remember when you were coming out in Mandamando, which mm. you went, and thank you for that. That's really mm. great. You you came out and said, part of how we grew up is the reason as to why we have this governance that we have. Yes. And I remember having conversations with my mom. I'm like, during elections, like, none of the candidates really are it. Mm. I was like, but who? But who? I'm like, mm. that's the thing. You can't always accept something bad because there's no other option. Yes. Because there's always an option, mm. you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, when when does it change? Mm. When when that when do we change this course? Yeah. I feel like you've had an easier time, mm-hmm. let me tell you, from my view, mm. of being in an environment that has really allowed you to explore. Mm. How tell me about that. Mm. Because it's it's one in a million. Okay. An environment to explore, mm-hmm. to make decisions, mm-hmm. can makes it a little bit safer. Right. Um, first, let me correct you by saying mm. it was not necessarily an environment that allowed me to explore. Oh, okay. It got to a point where um, I think uh, I've, I've mentioned, but for those who don't know me, mm. I got pregnant at 17 and so I became a mom really young. Mm. And I think based off of making such a difficult decision, I developed the mentality that it it not it takes nothing away from you for standing mm. up for yourself and deciding that this is what i want to do with with myself and with my life yeah and so i i had to really set my foot down and you know set boundaries yeah. with my dad and say okay this is i understand you want the best for me mm. um uh, you know you you're the parent with more experience you have wisdom you're you the parent this. full stop yes <laughs> But at the, at the end of the day, this is my life. I'm not going to be miserable 10, 20 years from now in a career that I don't love mm. just because that's what is booming in the market. Mm. You know, eh? at this point, ukiingia, ukikuwa na your degree, ya, ya business, ama uki, ukiingia accounting, eh, you'll, always, you'll always have something to fall back on. And I was like, as I've observed myself, this is, it's not me. It does mm. not suit my personality. It doesn't align with the kind of vision I have for my life. Obviously, um, at 19, 20, that's not exactly what I was thinking. But I was yeah. like, I'm just not feeling it. Mm. And I'm going to choose something that I'm feeling. Yeah. And so it was a shock for my dad, obviously. Mm. But he was like, okay, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not also wasting my money. As well. And yeah, I'm not seeing results. So mm. let me allow you. And I re- I'm so grateful for him yeah. for that up until date because if he would have not allowed me to, <laughs> to be here, I don't know yeah. what I would have been doing, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. And that was the birth of psychology for me. I really love that. Mm. I, I want to go back to 17-year-old Akini. Mm-hmm. We talked about it before we went on air. Mm. And how, because when you said you had your kid young, I didn't know how young it was. Right. And I'm like, wait, how does a 17-year-old land there in mm-hmm. the first place? Mm. What, was it the father of your child? Mm-hmm. Was he a grown-up or a child just like he you? He was a grown-up. Okay, that's yeah, not and, right. and now more than ever when women as feminists are having conversations about safeguarding children, especially teenage girls, yeah. from pre- predatory adult men, it really hit me that that was me. Yeah. How? I, what was your age difference? How old, how old was he? He was probably 25, 26. And you were seven? Yes. That's not right. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And so it didn't hit me Was he aware you were, you were a kid? He was. He was aware I was in high school. He was. And so at that point, a teenage girl is not thinking this is not safe. Of course. There's no A teenage no girl excuse. is a child. Yeah. You Forever know? and is. Is the sound okay? Oh, okay. So However, um, you uh, adults... You you kind of see me. I've seen. Know. I saw that tweet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a, there's a very hideous tweet that like, oh, and these girls who behave mature. Mm. What do you mean by behave yes. mature? Children will mimic grown ups. You see, kids wear their father's shoes. Mm. They're little like children always want to yes. want to mimic something. Yes. So when a young girl is apparently acting like a grown up, mm. it's not an excuse for come and try yeah. grown up things yes. with them. Because you're the adult, you're, the you're adult. supposed to, you know. How did you How did you guys boundaries. land into that situation in the first place? Um, as you've had, I got pregnant at 17. Yeah. So at 16, you're 
trying to fit in, you know. Have everyone, a boyfriend? Yes, everyone <laughs> in high school is coming back with stories after after the after we open school about, hey, my boyfriend, we were doing this and this and this. And so you want, also want to fit in. Mm. So you're not necessarily choosing a boyfriend because you love them so much or, you know, you're clicking or you're compatible or that, this and that. Girl. It's basically just to peer pressure mentality. I don't want like a story. Yes. And I, I can also attribute a lot of that to how I was raised. Okay. So I'm actually so passionate about that, and that's what I'm currently doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a therapist who focuses on play. So I play with adults, and I also play with children. So you do children ch- child psychology yes, as well? child oh, okay. psych- psychology. I play with adults, and mm. I also coach Parents on parenting. That's very interesting. I yes. want to get into that. But I, I want to stick to the story yeah. so that we get where, so, how we landed to yeah. a 17-year-old Akimi. Um, my upbringing was very... I was raised by um, a very strict dad who, if I use psychology terms, hmm. he was... Um, uh, what do they call it? There, there's usually three types of parenting. There's permissive, authoritarian, and authoritative. Mm. So he was a very authoritative dad. Okay. Yeah, he was very, you know, my way on the highway, um, where sometimes we tiptoe around him because mm. if you're not acting how he wants you to act, then it's, it's a problem. Mm. And so we were very kind of guarded. Caged, if you can Caged, say. yes. Yeah. And then he was not the most emotionally present parent he'd provide up until this day i'm very grateful for that we never lacked for anything yeah but the emotional aspect of being emotionally present with your children it was never there Mm. just wanting to play with your child wanting to know how their day was what is going on with their life without judging or Mm. without telling them no you do this instead yeah that aspect was never there. Mm. And so now when I look back to my teenage years, I can understand why I gravitated to an older guy. Okay. Yeah. Because it was, that relationship was not there. Mm. Every girl really needs their own father to be, not really their love, Mm. but to be the one to tell them they're beautiful, the one to sh- mm. show up emotionally. But sometimes I, I'm not excusing their behavior. Mm-hmm. I usually feel like society has really taught men, especially in that age group, because right. we're talking 60, 50, 70, mm. that they needed just to provide. Yes. That's your role mm. on this earth as a man. As no a emotion, man. nothing else. Just be a husband, get children, mm. provide. So in their robotic mindset Mm. they never knew that these are humans that i relate with every day i need to show up as a human as well Mm. not just as a provider right and i sometimes when i hear those i'm like i feel bad that we we face the challenges that they they inflicted on us Mm. but they didn't do it intentionally Intentionally. it's such a yeah mix of things Mm. you're now having to work through a lot of baggage that was brought there by your parents Mm. And realizing that you can't also use them as an excuse anymore. <laughs> You're good. I'm now. Yes, the excuse is yes, done. Yes. Yeah. In as much as yes, they were emotionally unavailable. They were that. They were that. It does not excuse you from being that. You you have to show up yes. now as a grown up as mm-hmm. who you want to be. Mm-hmm. So Akinye, this man is talking to you yeah. and he's telling you all these kind of funny funny things. Mm-hmm. Um, did it ever cross your mind that this is someone who shouldn't be talking to you? Mm. Or did it seem cool to have an older boyfriend? Mm. It it seemed cool mm. at that time. I was not really in the mental state where I'm thinking, oh, I'm not safe. This mm. is a predator. Yeah, this is, yeah. you know, that's they're taking me. advantage of me. You know, I was getting my fair share of fitting in in the social, you know, aspect of things my mm. friends are dating i'm also dating i'm i'm fitting in so yeah. it was never really it never really crossed my mind mm. to think you know you're not supposed to be doing this and then again we were not necessarily having conversations mm. with my mom where we were open about the sexual aspect of things where you know as a girl you need to take care of yourself in this and this way sex generally in africa is tiptoed Around. It's not right. We are not even having sex ed in schools where teenagers need it the most. And the truth of the matter, whether we um, shun it or we, we, we put things under the, under the rug, the yeah. truth is 
teenagers are having sex. Oh, no. They are. No. And Don't it's... tell me that. I have a teenager at home. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, you know, the stage where they're at, as you had said, mm. they're trying to mimic adults, you know, and in I, it makes it even worse in this day and age of social media where... Uh, you're trying to, you want to look like a certain celebrity, you know, um, you're trying to mimic this celebrity. You want to fit cool in to as you. well. Yes, you also want to fit in. And so, based off of that, they're going to have sex. And then again, this is a time um, where their bodies are growing. Yes. Their uh, hormones yes. are changing. They're curious about certain things. This is when boys are starting to masturbate. Girls, you know, are realizing, okay, my body is feeling a certain type of way. And so we can't tell teenagers not to feel these things. They're natural. Yes, they, they are. are. They're in the system. They yes. were put there by God Yes, from the word go. Yes. Yeah. So being able to introduce sex ed to teenagers and just uh, allowing them to be able to express themselves how their bodies are at the time mm. is very important. And even because I, I think there's a misconception that sex ed is telling teenagers to have sex. Yeah, that's because that's, you see a lot of sex ed when you see in other countries, mm -hmm. they do sex ed and then they teach them how to use, mm -hmm. you know, protective mm -hmm. like condoms mm -hmm. and how they teach them, they, they allow them to go for, you know, family planning methods. Right. And so you're like, okay, if we are giving them the methods to curb pregnancy, mm -hmm. we're encouraging them to engage in this thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think people are afraid. Are afraid, mm. yes. But isn't prevention better than cure? Because mm. when, you look at the start, it. when you look at the stats, when you look at the stats, so many teenagers are getting pregnant. Yeah. I was exactly. looking at the stats the other day, and in Machakos, mm. in Mombasa County, mm. so many teenage girls are getting pregnant. And a lot of them, mm. when you research further, it has to do with older men it's not even and that's there. a disgusting part. Yes. i don't like it yes. I, you know if I'm, I'm not saying that if I, if you had told me that mm. with your 70 was an hour 70 i'd be like okay it's a kid mm. it went bad mm. but, but to hear it's a grown-up you're like shit man don't do right. that don't talk to kids right why are you talking to stop talking to kids mm -hmm. don't talk to kids yeah right. it's so annoying sorry mm. so you're not having conversations with mom about this you're not having conversations with mom about this no auntie is coming to tell you this and that. Yeah. The only thing we're educating you is about how to wear your pads. Because mm. I remember that was the biggest mm. thing in high school. And even with the pads, mm. we, are, we are being separated from the boys and we are hiding. Even boys need to know how to wear pads as well, although they're not going to wear pads. Yeah. Yeah. We are being hidden. Mm. If if you if you research a lot in African homes, at a, at a say, mm. okay, and their pads kwa, kwa, kwa shop. It's wrapped in a gazette. <laughs> <laughs> and my act of feminism nowadays is... I it's, it's, it's a natural occurrence of my body. Why do I have to, mm. you know, shy away from it? So these conversations are not happening. Mm. And I'm having to figure things out for myself. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying sex ed is very important. Because if a teenager is aware, okay, this is how my body is behaving... Mm. This is what I want to do. But if I'm making that decision to do it, these are the consequences. But this is also how I can protect myself. Mm. Then we are able to progress. Yes. But I would like a little encourage of staying. Yes. For me too. For me too. <laughs> it's, it's really not an age where you should be doing things where you can't... Um, reverse. The, the consequences of having sex, you know. There are STIs, you mm. can get HIV, you can get pregnant. So when you're teaching sex ed, these are things they also need to be able to know that this can happen. Mm. And so if you choose to make this decision, this these is... are the consequences. Yeah. But the, the good thing about sex ed is it does not um, shun away what is happening to the teenager's body. Mm. And it's now something I'm very passionate about because we tend to think Children are just people who exist in our in our worlds as <laughs> you know characters who are just there to fill the set. They are to be seen. Yes, they are to be seen, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate because a child also has feelings, a child has desires, a child has you know a child has the same things adults feel. Mm -hmm. The child is also experiencing, but especially them. with less knowledge. Yes, because. With, they and do nothing. You, yeah. you as the adult are tasked mm. to be able to help them navigate 
So if you are the adult and you're already judging, how is the child going to be able to navigate that? The child is telling you, mom, I'm a teenager. I've started feeling like I want to do this. And you're telling them, don't do it. You're, My friends have started kissing. Yeah, you're already telling them that your existence is wrong. Stop. Don't do it. Yes. It's strange that we do that as grown-ups mm. and we forget that that's how we brought them to this earth. Yeah. We kissed someone and the baby came out. Mm. So why, why when a kid tells you they want to kiss, you think it's abnormal? It's not something out of this world. Yeah. It's very normal. So... Um, you've really explained how it came to be, mm-hmm. to having a child. But of course, right now, she's a blessing, almost yeah. turning 10. Mm-hmm. What conversation will you have with her when that time comes? Because mm-hmm. 10 is still... Yeah. yeah. Um, or are you already having those conversations because also predators exist? Um, we are having conversations at the level with where she's at. Okay. Of course, when a child is 10, you're not telling her, you know, this, this the, the raunchy stuff, you're mm-hmm. not telling her all that. Mm-hmm. But... Children are very curious. Mm. And especially if you've allowed your child to be able to come with you with any type of questions, mm. they're already curious. When you are telling me, mom, we came, you took me from the supermarket and now they, they, they watch some cartoons. They watch, they are talking to their, their peers. Their There's classmates. an auntie who's pregnant. Yes, <laughs> there's an auntie who's pregnant. Some children are being exposed to adult content and they'll bring it in school and say something. So your child is already curious. So it's having the wisdom to learn how to be able to not lie to them. Uh, but tell them the truth within the the level of of de- development yeah. of where they're at. Yeah. So as at ten, a child is is already um, understanding how bodies work. Okay, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. they're understanding also human interaction. They mm. they kind of get the concept of love. Mm. Yes. Okay. So being able to just break it down at her level mm. that she can understand n- without lying to her mm. uh, and also not traumatizing her with all the, you know, detailed stuff that comes with what sex is and, and all that. Yeah. And slowly as she grows, you keep twisting it mm. to the, to fit. Yes. The developmental age she's in. I think there's one thing uh, African parents have done or the African system really emphasizes this fear. Mm. The installation of fear, it's installed in every little home. Because mm. when you when you feel that vijana, vijana ni if you install that fear long enough, it will, you know, it will register in their minds. Mm. And then now you find this 40-year-olds who don't want to settle down because they were told not to speak to men. So we're not even speaking to men as grown-ups. Yes. We're constantly afraid of these people that we're supposed to be sitting with and breaking bread. Yes. How do we change that narrative mm. now that we are parents? Mm. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because when you even look at the reason why a lot of us went to Mandamano, mm-hmm. or rather Gen Zs are changing the conversation, is because we live in fear-based systems. We can't stand up to police brutality, fear. We can't stand up to our government. We are being ruled based off of fear. So it's... We can't stand up to religion. Yes, because of fear. (laughs) (laughs) So it requires really a societal shift. And Mm. change only happens from you and me. Mm. It starts with you and it starts with me. And so fear develops basically from how we are parented the stories we are told about ourselves and how their parents parented them. So it becomes a generational cycle mm. of repeating the same kind of things. Yeah. And so for, for you to be able to be the person who becomes the cycle breaker, it takes a lot of inward in, in, introspection. <laughs> A lot of I feel like you're shouting at me. Why are you shouting at me? Why are you shouting at me? Stop shouting. It really does. Because when I became a parent, yeah. that's when I realized a lot of the things I hated that my mom and my dad were doing, I was repeating them mm. with my own child. Oh, damn. Yeah. Like what? And it, it was a moment of clarity for me because I asked myself if, if I really hated being treated this way, why, why am would, I doing the same thing to my child? Why would you repeat it? What did you find yourself, what did you catch yourself doing that you had so, to be like, Mm-mm. 
I, I, I realized for me, her telling me no was such a big trigger. Like, how dare How you? dare you? Huh? How dare you tell me no? You know me, I was not allowed to say no. So, yes, why are you telling me no? Unaniambia ka nani? Eh, mindyo, kusema hapa. And so, it becomes the same bulldozing that you hated so much and you are repeating with Damn. With, with your own children. So, how do you catch yourself? Because I don't lie. I, I won't lie. I, mm. I kind of like authoritarian. A, point, a part of me acts like I think I want authority because that's what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. But I realize I, li- I really like an environment where we can speak. Yeah. But I find myself being authoritarian Now, that lot. is authoritative. Mm. Now, the problem, and we'll come back later to the parenting styles to understand better. Mm. Um, but um, where were we? Oh, the things that you cut yourself oh, we, when, uh, yes. with your daughter yes. now. Yeah. So it required a lot of me. Um, and luckily enough, I had already gotten into the psychology um, classes. Hmm. And so, luckily, because not everyone gets that. Yeah. So, I, I started asking myself a lot of questions. You know, you um, she's telling you she doesn't like this, but you're forcing it on her. You, you, you want to bulldoze. Yes, you're the parent who has the awareness of what is right, mm. but where are her feelings? Yeah. Why is she not being, being considered? Why is she not being seen? And part of a lot of the trauma for me that I went through mm. was not being seen, you know? Not being Your bad. parent tells you they know what's best for you and they're not willing to be able to listen mm. when you're articulating your feelings, your your desires and, and all whatnot. Mm. And so for me, I was like, I want to start listening. I want to start listening. So it was a conscious decision that I had made. Yeah. And not to say that I was going to change immediately overnight overnight no. yes mm-hmm. because we learn parenting from our parents mm. that is the truth mm. so if your parent was a certain type of way best believe <laughs> a lot yeah, of no, that is again. going to be repeated no, please do not talk to me like that <laughs> i will not be my parents they're good they've done great business yeah lakini personality mm-hmm. mm. best believe you're going to find to catch yourself <laughs> You're going to catch yourself doing a lot of what you had told yourself you hate, you don't want to to see in your own parenting, it's going to be there. Because that's where we learn. Yeah. Yeah. We and inherently <laughs> genes are kind of hard to do because I feel like genes also trickle down in character. Yes. They're not only physical, mm-hmm. character and who you are is really what they are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't like it. So it 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 takes a lot of conscious effort and mm. also a lot of learning mm. because and that's why I, I parenting classes because mm. you are not able to know how to be a better parent a more emotionally intelligent parent if you don't know if you didn't learn from your parents you're not going to know how to do it with your own child yeah and that's why you find now a lot of people become permissive mm. In the sense that uh, it's also a type of parenting where my dad was very, he used to beat us so much. Um, He was so um, verbally abusive. He was strict. So Mimi, I'll never make my child feel that. That's the extreme. Extreme. So you, you, you don't become the dependable adult in your child's life. Dependable how? I let them do their thing and I provide. What's the issue? Now your child is navigating life on their own. Or making decisions. Yeah. And you're the one who should be kind of guiding. Yes. Because now you're more of like the friend ah. type of thing. Mm. When your child says, I want chocolate, you'll give because you don't want your child to cry. When your child says, ah, I want to go for a sleepover here and they're throwing a tantrum, you don't want them to feel that pain. So you're, you're saying you become a yes kind of parent because you're escaping that trauma, mm. which still does not address what needs to be addressed. And now you're creating a fresh generation mm-hmm. of very entitled individuals who, have you ever met those kind of people who want what they want when they want it and they don't have any aspect of compromise? Those are... <laughs> Are you talking the people to me? who are raised by permissive parents. In a way. Yeah. But I get you. I get you. The entitlement to children and mm. even being angry that they don't get it immediately yes. when it happens. Yes. Understanding there's a concept of time. Yes. You know, if you want to 
get a cake, it has mm. to be baked for a couple mm. of hours and then mm. it's ready. So you really have to learn to wait. And you don't have to have all of it. Right. I get your... So even all these parenting styles, but these are the bad ones. Permissive, authoritarian, and authoritative. Authoritative is now um, what psychologists or researchers have shown works best. Authoritative. It, yes. Basically. Where the parent um, knows what's best for the child, of course. but they are willing to have conversations, they're mm. willing to have that aspect of compromise, yeah. understand where their children are coming from, and also develop friendship with mm. their children because a child will not share with someone who is not their friend. I think my dad is that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he calls me himself my bestie. Mm. Like, I kind of have a 60-year-old bestie. It's right. weird, but it's okay. I get it. So there was still the aspect of discipline structure. Yes, but... Yes, but at the same time, you felt like you could be yeah, able to... Yeah, cool. Yes. But what, what sucks is, with African homes, you see it's not repetitive to all children. Mm. They can pick and choose which child right. they will do that with. Right. So some other children might not benefit mm. from an authoritative father mm-hmm. or mother. And then others... Because children really come out with different experiences. Mm-hmm. Like you have... Like right now, you have your child. If you decide to have more children... The other children that come after now that you have learned so much will not have the same testimony as your firstborn yeah, child. Yeah. And it's such a, I don't know if it's a selfish thing or it's, it really takes away of the joy of being in a home together. Because mm-hmm. when children come out and say, I experience a different dad, my yeah. sisters say that all the time, yeah. that they experience different parents mm-hmm. from me. Because I came a little bit later when, you know, things are chilled. Uh, Maybe the, the younger. Of, yeah, so, the youngest. Okay, okay. Maybe the cash is flowing. Like yeah. they've, they've beaten everyone else mm-hmm. with you, things are chilling. Mm-hmm. I, f- I find that a little bit. I don't know if it's selfish. Mm-hmm. I find it hard that we did not experience the same. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think for that, which is very true, we, even the siblings within the home, they'll experience very different versions of them, of their parents. And so even in terms of um, dealing with their adverse childhood experiences, um, they are going to have certain levels of trauma when it comes to their parents. So someone will say, for me, I never f- felt hard by mm. mom. Yeah. And you, you're like, hey, Andre, me, mom, me, me, mom, me, hey, me, me, mom, mom does this for me. To, hey, me yeah. in <laughs> and for someone will say, another one will say, I never felt warmth from my dad. Mm. Another one will say, hey, but me, I felt that warmth. <laughs> another one will feel resentful of the mom for not being present because she was working a lot. Mm. Another one will say, but me, I experienced her because mom slowed down with work mm. when 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 this other one was, was being born. Yeah. So we are going to all have different versions of how we experience our parents. Mm. But for me as a parent, what I can say is allowing your child also to process with you mm. how their experience of you was. Yes. And that is not... That is something a lot of, of our parents are not ready for. How are you experiencing me as a parent? <laughs> How do you have that question yes. as a child? And you should be ready for the answers that... It might be good. It, and might, it might be, be bad. <laughs> Damn! And Imagine you need to be giving you a bad sounding view. board, that emotional board for your child to feel safe enough to give you that feedback. Because a bad review for a parent, like, mom, I feel like you're not showing up the way you need to, dad, you're not doing what you need to mm-hmm. do is one of the biggest, it's an ego, it's such an ego brush right. for parents. And then, and an ego brush for someone who has the upper hand. Mm-hmm. There's a certain nitty, a reel on mm-hmm. Instagram and it had Gen Z's and grown-ups. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all of you, you Gen Z's, you said you can unparent someone, unfather someone, even as we can ah, unchild right, you. And it. one of the grown-ups said, okay, even the Gen Z was a grown-up, but, Grow up mm. in Nyaka. Mm. And the and the the older one was like, even as we can unchild you, and I found that very mean. Right. That the vulnerable party can be unchild mm-hmm. or unlinked. And I'm like, mm. why is it that because of your power, you feel like Neza Rushom to which is something that is very common. Mm. If in your case, I can if you if another girl told you that she was pregnant at 17, she should not have stayed home, she should have been unchild. Right. Very quick. Mm. Very fast. Mm. Very not damn you. That is true. So it it really begs the question of how do we accommodate our folks and live with them and love them and forgive them, mm. knowing that they would be willing, a lot of folks are willing to unchild their child. Yes. 
you know, with their choices. Mm. You decide you want to be LGBTQ and child. Mm. You decide you want to be even married to another tribe mm. and child. Mm. You decide to choose a different way of life, even merely have tattoos mm. and child. Mm. How do you as a grown-up just choose to be, you know, a better person knowing that this, the one who had an upper hand did choose you yeah. because of your choices? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I think being able to make such a decision, first of all, is extremely emotionally tasking mm. being able to see i didn't get what i wanted from my parents mm-hmm. they are still not respecting they're not still not respective of my boundaries i have tried to you know be cordial with our interactions mm. but it still seems not to work mm. for someone to have gotten to that decision mm. it takes a lot from them mm. this this um I'll, I'll direct this to the parents, and yeah. this is what I'm, because I work a lot with them. Yes, yes. This yes. is what I'm going to say. Your child is not an extension of you. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Your child <laughs> is an individual on their own. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. And when you stop seeing your child as an extension of you, that's when it's going to, it gets easier with allowing them to make their own choices, their own decisions. Now, the, the examples you've given, yeah. uh, um, your child marries from another tribe and, you know, and child, you, your child decides they're coming home with tattoos and child, your child decides they're doing dreadlocks. Same. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of parents do that because they're looking at their children as extension of themselves. Mm. This is what I had. This is the vision I had for my life and you're going to fit into this without realizing this is an individual with their own likes their own wants, their own needs, and they're not necessarily going to fit into that box yeah. that you're going to, you're trying to push them into. And parenting, as I've realized, is something that requires ego death. He it requires the ego, ego death. Do you be best know? believe yeah. if you've created a safe space for your child, they're giving you feedback every single day. Mommy food in a bowl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I don't like how today you came late and you're not giving me attention. Sure. Mom, I don't like how you're doing this and this and this and this and this. For example, if your child gives you such such feedback, yeah. and you know, at the back of your mind, you're like, hey, I'm I'm really on my grind, I'm putting food on the table, my my money is up, you know, I'm being able to do this and this and this, and you're like. Why are you telling me that? And, and someone's coming to a here. School? Someone fitting you here. Yes. Someone you can just put like this and acquire a bad yes. review. So it requires ego death and realizing that your child is also is experiencing your parenting. You're not experiencing their parenting. <laughs> it's the other way around. Damn. The same way mm. when we work in offices, our bosses are giving us you know, feedback. Yeah. And this is what you need to improve on. You're not going to tell your that boss, you know, to hell with it. Mm. You're going to sit down and see what you can work on and what is not, you, you're not really able to, to improve on. A performance review. Yes. <laughs> so your delay. children are always giving you that. And so there needs to be a culture where your child knows it's safe to come to you. Of course, respect re- respectfully. And I say that they learn from you. You can't demand that respect that you don't teach them. Can't be out here with a slick tongue. Yes. Because a lot of times, even in, in, in my workshops, mm. I'll I'll talk to parents about your child learns. Your child learns. So they are literally learning every single thing. <laughs> How you respond when that bike man brings deliveries late and you're like, ah, they are learning from you. Every single thing. So I even anytime, speak to your partner yes, as well. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So anytime you're, you're struggling with a certain kind of behavior from your child, start by investigating yourself. Yes. How do I respond to, to these things myself? Mm. How, how do I... Um, uh, handle issues under stress. Yeah. Emotionally, am I really reactive 
or do I respond to situations and what is my child learning? Because if you shout when you don't like things, that's what your child is learning. Okay, you know, you were shouting, you were growing up. Exactly. And so when oh they God. shout back, you're like, that's disrespectful. I swear, even as a grown up, I realized one of the reasons as to why I even couldn't work with my folks because mm-hmm. they work in a very noisy environment because mm-hmm. of that. I'm like, I cannot be around the chaos. I re- mm-hmm. It's not like I don't like, why are we shouting? Why is right. it that when we are unhappy we're shouting i believe we can converse like this mm. what is what is this quick response i don't know why especially african homes why was it a thing to shout at kids yeah. emotional intelligence and it's it, you see emotional intelligence really calls you to be self-aware yes. of what you're doing right yes. and wrong and i have a question that i don't know if you're allowed to to speak mm-hmm. about i'd want to know some of the one of the most adverse cases you've ever been able to deal with mm-hmm. And first, first tell me, which are the age groups of parents that are coming to you? Mm. So we can see if we're dealing, if we're, we're changing this nation or not. Right. Which age group comes to you, first mm. of all, of lot, parents? What I'm seeing is a lot of millennial parents. Mm, so 40? Yes, 40. I think 45 is the, the oldest, oldest I've, I've worked with. Yeah. Yes. And the youngest parents you have? Around 30. Yeah. 29, Apple. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that's the age group that are willing to change yes, themselves. Yeah. Some of the cases, and I know you can never say, you know, like, and I don't know if they see this mm. case and then they'll be like, this is mm. my therapist, Alinda Kunianika, because mm. I know there's client, mm. you know, privilege and all that, client, doctor, a pri- privilege. Yeah. Um, which which is the most adverse case that you remember that this was someone really damaged mm. and you walked them through to now a safer space? Right. Yeah. With the parenting or... Either. Oh, yeah. an adult who's who's come to therapy. Yeah. So I think a lot of adults, based off of, you know, being in chaotic, I'm, I'm just really going to put it in a vague aspect yeah. for yeah, the confidentiality purposes. But a lot of adults who have been in chaotic environments tend to also live with that chaos. Mm. So you seek the chaos that you grew up with. The noise. Yeah, not uh, and chaos, not in this. And I think that's uh, another misconception mm. because someone could have grown, grown up in an environment where there was no violence. Mm. Mm. There was no violence. There was no shouting. But there was chaos in the sense that um, there was a lot of silent treatment. There was a lot of um, parents keeping score with each other. And even keeping score with their children. If you do this, I'm going to do this. Um, there, there is a lot of cases of neglect, emotional neglect. God damn it. You know, where parents are working so much and the children have to navigate through life on their own. So chaos in that sense, not even necessarily the noise. Chaos is as, it's yes, very variable. Yes. It's not it's not a constant of a constant, you know the noise and the crazy. Yes, okay, I get yes. it. Okay. And so when 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 you grow up you're in your adult years, you sort of seek the same environment you're in. And a lot of us do that. Even if you're in a happy home, you seek the same environment you're in. So if you are in a happy home, you'll seek that in in your adult life. Damn. So you're sort of looking for the familiar because that is what your nervous system is used to. So a lot of adults will be self-destructive or look for self-destructive partners. And so a lot of what I've seen is people who, who uh, women who will end up with narcissistic partners or uh, partners who have borderline personality disorders. And for me, the worst case actually is men who end up with such women. Ooh. <laughs> because our society does not talk enough about destructive women. I know. In the age They're of empowerment so and feminism, mm. we don't talk a, a lot about destructive women and they ruin men's lives. I can imagine. Yeah. So uh, the, the worst case I've seen is where this client self-esteem was completely shattered. Yeah. And so there's aspects of self-harming in terms of, you know, mm. harming yourself, um, suicidal attempts, um, a- a- alcoholism, or a lot of times people get into just addictions to be able to self-soothe the pain that they're already feeling within them. 
Mm. And self-soothing happens in very many different ways. What society shuns is usually al- alcoholism. Yeah, know? and suicide. Yeah, and suicide. Yeah. But you'll find someone being very sexually promiscuous, too many <laughs> partners. You know, so uh, you're trying to self-soothe with sex. Mm. For others, it's food. And I think that's also something that needs to be talked a food. lot about. Yeah. Food. So you find someone <laughs> is struggling really with really unhealthy eating patterns, even yeah. towards obesity mm. because of, you know, self-soothing, a lot of the chaos you're feeling within you and you don't know where to take it. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I'm passionate about parenting mm. is because that is the first unit of socialization yeah. and it really determines a lot of what you deal with in your adult life mm. and so many people are carrying baggage which leaves them stuck at the age where they started realizing my life is fucked up so for some people it could be at seven i've seen someone who regresses to like a five-year-old the Their thought processes, the, the sort of the decisions they make, because that's where they were stuck emotionally. Yani the parenting really oh, did a number one. Oh, oh, at that time. You really, like, you're scaring me. Mm. Someone goes back to that age. Yeah. And what are the, what are they doing? Are they, do they go to a corner, suck their, their finger? What What is it? It's. I, I, and I, I know a lot of people can relate to this when I say there are so many childish adults. Hey, Apple. So many childish adults. The way we make decisions, the way we are not emotionally mature. Your boyfriend does not pick a call. You spam call them or you block them and you know you're not talking to them for three weeks. That is not an adult decision. It's not. That is an adult. So when I... <laughs> When I say childish, it's not necessarily... For, there's trauma that actually can take you back to where, you know, you're doing now the the um, childish behaviors. Like yeah. you, you want to steam, you want to suck your fingers, you want, you want to be carried. Yeah. There's that. But when I talk of being stuck at that age, I mean the decisions that you're supposed to make rationally, but you're stuck in that emotional mind of a five-year-old God. so you'll silent treat your partner because they've not done what you want that is a childish decision and so there are so many adults who are stuck in the developmental ages where they were traumatized because of parenting oh we got a lot of work to do yeah. A lot of work to mm. do. I am even scared. Mm. And you see, the worst thing, you find those characteristics in ourselves of blocking and, you know, just shutting down because we're like, okay, I'm not going to let people have access to me if they're yeah. not going to act right. Mm. That's the same thing a kid does. Once yeah. you don't give them their chocolate, right. and it's such a bummer when you now hear the perspective now as a grown-up, you're like, oh my God, we really need... Therapy is a basic need. It is. I, I Oh my God. It's a basic need even for therapists. <laughs> <laughs> because Mganga Hajigangui. Where are you going anyway? I see my own therapist. You have a therapist yourself? Yes. Oh, yeah, because you're also carrying a lot of mm. burdens. People keep on coming to a float to yes. you. Yeah, yes. it can be heavy on mm. one spirit. And just basically also for perspective in my own life, mm. because sometimes you never see from the lens that therapy is able to open for you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really essential for any and everyone. Mm. So the styles of therapy is now what can be different for people. And that's why for me, play, I've I've realized works for a lot of even adults. Play therapy. Yes. I like that. Because so many adults, as I've said, are stuck in their childishness or because of the trauma they experience, they are stuck in the developmental age where um, they were not able to Mm. move forward. And so I've, I've seen play really helps them to start connecting with their inner child Mm. because only until Mm. you are able to connect with the wounds of your inner child, you can move forward. Damn. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about now profession. Anytime you sit across someone, people get scared or mm. psychiatrists mm-hmm. or psychologists because mm. they're like, I can't so much. Mm. Can you Please read someone's I mind? I do not 
PSA. <laughs> I don't read minds. Mm-hmm. I analyze behavior. Okay. I analyze behavior consistently over a period of time. Not akaka interaction ka three hours. Okay, even from, I, I think with time, mm. from the interaction, based off of what someone says. You can. Oh, yeah, okay, we, we do have that bad behavior as therapists of psychoanalyzing people. We, we do have that. So how do you handle it when you go on dates? Because you when someone comes to you, it's like, oh, I want to date you. I think you're beautiful, da, da, da. But when they sit across you, you're already like, oh, you oh, you childhood drama, yeah. Nayona. Nayona childhood drama. This is a joke, by the way, a, a lot of therapists make that. Therapists are more suitable with their own pocket therapists. So a partner mm. who doesn't put you in a position where you are their therapist. Oh. So therapists tend to go to people who listen to them more than they listen to them. Mm. Because they already do so much of that in their own line of profession. So yeah. we sort of tend to seek partners who make us more in touch with our inner children. It's more light, it's more airy, mm. less of packed with all that yeah yeah so it's it's a bad behavior yes but i try to even on dates or rather in talking stages mm. i try to really not do that yeah yeah let's talk about profession itself because we're about to wind mm. up um the profession of of psychiatry and psychology has really changed over the years mm. in the country mm-hmm. becoming now a central thing in you know a lot of systems mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know if they've started providing psychologists and psychiatrists for for police officers but i think they should mm-hmm. but slowly and slowly we're seeing it becoming a thing right as a leader in your industry mm-hmm. how, how do you feel over the years we've come and what is the way forward in your profession mm-hmm. yeah um i think we've th- there's been so many strides as of now we have a professional body the same way KSL is managed by, you know, its own professional body. Yeah. Um, psychologists now have that where we are able to be regulated. So you can't just practice without a license. And you can't even be here misbehaving with the patients. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a, a, a therapist, by the way, who you felt has really broken confidentiality or you felt that they've gone beyond their ethical boundaries, we have bodies like KCPA where you can report the incident if you didn't feel safe with them. So we have bodies bodies that are now regulating us and you know we are being able to move forward in our profession in a more professional way and in a more advanced way. Yeah. Um in terms of advancements, I feel like they could be it could be better. Yeah. Especially in schools, that is something that should be compulsory, mm-hmm. where we all have school counselors who children can be able to go to. In our workplaces, I, I we should have industrial psychologists who are just able to be in the workplace to help um, Kenyans deal with stress, burnout, because there is that. The aspect of the economy crashing means people will have to put in more work hours. Yes. And because of that, we suffer a lot of mental health issues. Mm. So in the workplace where people can be able to go and talk to someone, and generally the government should even provide um, free services for Kenyans where they can just be able to talk through a lot of issues. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like there is more that can that can be done where the government can make uh, mental health services more affordable for the average Kenyan. Because therapy as of now, for a lot of people, it's middle class families and up. Yeah, it's a little bit on the expensive yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's even seen as a luxury. Yes, yeah. and you can't even blame the therapists themselves because I've worked so hard to be where I'm at now. I can't charge peanuts for the kind of work that I'm doing. So if there was a way where it can, um, there can be subsidies or, you know, support where the average Kenyan is able to be, uh, able to get these services for an affordable amount, then it's it's because therapy. Yeah. (laughs) Mm. <laughs> I think I think I'm 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 sold, and I think you're the third person now in this year who was really third or fourth person who's really sold therapy to me, and I hope it has as well. Mm. What would be a message to a 17 year old who's about to make a crazy decision? Mm. You know, because you've come a long way to mm. now being a grown woman with her own career and her own family. Mm. What would be the message for the younger people, especially mm. Gen Alpha, mm. 
mm. who are discovering themselves mm. in a world or in a society that really doesn't understand them. Yeah. Um, I think to that 17-year-old, what I'd say is that love that you're looking for outside of yourself, you will never find it. Look for that love within. I know you did not get it from your parents. You feel like you're not being seen, you're not being heard. Look for ways that you can love yourself first. It's never going to come from outside. Your, the love that you're really craving for is within you. And once you, you're able to learn how to be able to love yourself from within, then you can be able to navigate any kind of stress from outside. And also learn to listen to the adults. I know you think they're not cool, but they give sound advice. Just listen to them until you can be able to make sound decisions on your own or you're capable to be able to do things for yourself. Mm. But until then, listen to them. They yeah. have had more experiences. They've been where you are. Just listen to them. <laughs> As I usually say, well, if you cut down, mm. how can someone access your services? Because I know therapy mm. is slowly becoming a basic need. Right. If someone wants to come to you, how do they do that? How mm. do we access a Kenya mm. the therapist? Okay. You can find me on on TikTok. Um, my name is Akinye Michael. I have not necessarily been very active. Manda Mano has really taken a lot of energy from me this I year. I can imagine. And the average Kenyan, you know, is stressed with the current state of affairs going on in the country. But um, I'm, 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 I'm able to access my TikTok so you can reach me there. Also my email. I'm also working on a website yes. where people can be able to, you know, just apply and, and get my services. And yeah, I think as of now, it's just my <laughs> Your TikTok, DMs. social media and also on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. You can get me on Twitter. Please follow her and check out and send her a DM. She could be of service to you. Remember, this is POV season two. It's all about African leaders and African stories. Thanks for watching.